Hello everyone, welcome to the part 5 video of Form 4 Additional Maths Chapter 5 Progressions and in this video we are going to look at deriving the formula of sum to infinity which is denoted by this symbol of a given geometric progression. So the first thing here is what is sum to infinity? So we look at a simple example here. Let's say you are given a pro uh, geometric progression here starting with 81 the second term is 27, the term 9, and it goes on. So you can see that the values become smaller and smaller and smaller. So what if we want to total up all the terms here? We, we take 81 plus 27 plus 9 plus the next term, and we add up until the term at the infinity. So this is what we call as a sum to infinity. We sum all the terms starting from the first term until the last term, which is at the infinity. So it is not possible for us to add one by one. So we can derive a formula which helps us to determine the value of the sum to infinity. So let's say you're given a geometric progression with the first term 10, given the common ratio 1 over 4. So if you want to find the sum of the terms of the first n terms, we use this formula. Since the r given here is smaller than 1, we are using this formula. And right now, if we build a table here, and in the table, we take n from 1 and slowly increasing. Then we see what will happen to the value of here, this value, r to the power of n. Okay? When n is 1, to find the sum of the first term, r here will be 1 over 4, n here will be 1. So this value here will, this value here will be 1 over 4 to, to the power of 1, you get 0 0.25. We want to find the sum of the first two terms where n is 2, r n here, these particular values here, becomes 1 over 4 to the power of 2, which you get 0 0.625. And you can see that when n, n is increasing, the value of this, that r to the power of n, will become smaller and smaller. So what happens if n approaches infinity? n increases until the, it is a value which is very big it approaches infinity. What do you think will happen to the value of r to the power of n? So r to the power of n will approach 0 because r to the power of n is decreasing and when n approaches infinity, r n eventually, r to the power of n eventually will approach 0. Hence this value here becomes 0 when we are looking for s infinity, the sum to infinity. So if this becomes 0, 1 minus 0 is 1, 1 times a is a. So for the numerator part here, it becomes a. Then we can summarize this as a new formula, which is the sum to infinity is actually equals to the first term a divided by 1 minus r. But it has a condition here, the r modulus must be less than 1 in order to use this formula. Now we try to look at the examples. Example 1. Find the sum to infinity for the following geometric series. So you can see that from 6 plus 2, we add up until infinity, all the values here. So when you see the word sum to infinity, there's only one formula, which is this, the one we just derived. So in order to use this formula, we must first find a and r. a here is 6, r will be 2 over 6, which is 1 over 3. We substitute the values into this formula, you get the sum to infinity equals to 6 yeah, over 1 minus r, which is 1 over 3. You calculate this, you get the answer, which is 9. Next, we have a given uh, geometric series here. So to find the sum to infinity, we must use this formula, where a now here becomes 5, and r is negative 1 over 5. Substitute the values into the formula, you get this, calculate this, you get 25 over, you get 25 over 6 or 4, 1 over 6. Example 3, the sum to infinity of a geometric progression is 10, and the sum of the first two terms is 15 over 2. Find all the possible common ratios. So now sum to infinity given is 10, okay, so we need to use this formula where sum to infinity equals to 10 and also the sum of the first two terms means the first term plus the second term equals to 15 over 2. So to find the common ratios, we need to use the formula 
for this so that we can show this in terms of a and r so it becomes this in order to solve for the r we need to convert this here in the terms of a and r as well so we know that the first term is a the second term will be a times r so we get this now we have two equations with two unknowns we can just solve this so we try to simplify this part first we do and bring one minus r to the right hand side we get this and for this part we can actually simplify it by factorizing a now you see because a equals to this so this a here we can replace with 10 times 1 minus r okay so this one we, we substitute into this part a here so we get this 10 times 1 minus r times 1 plus r equals to 15 over 2. we solve this in the next line okay so we have this we just move the 10 here and then we simplify this you get this next we just move the 1 to the right hand side becomes minus 1 and the negative sign here we move it here becomes negative then we, we calculate this you get 1 over 4 to find r we find the square root of 1 over 4 which is 1 over 2 or negative 1 over 2 so there are two possible values for r Example 4, express the recurring decimal or a repeating decimals here. You see 27, 27, 27, it is repeating as a fraction in its lowest terms. Actually, we did something like this before in the previous chapter, chapter 4. So this is the second method that we can use to solve the same question. So notice that 1.272727 is, we can break this down. Actually, it is 1 plus 0.27 plus 0 0.0027 plus 0 0.000027 and it goes on until infinity we leave one for now we'll take a look at this part here so these numbers here are actually a part of the geometric progression so this is a geometric series where if we want to find the sum to infinity from the first term here until the last the infinity the term at the infinity we can use the formula sum to infinity why you want to use this because we can show this in this form which is a fraction form we try okay first we find a so first term is here remember we leave one because one is not involved in the repeating the decimals we leave out one so the first term is this 0 0.27 r will be the second term over the first term so you take 0 0.0027 divided by this you get 1 over 100 or 0 0.01 you substitute the values into this formula you calculate the answers simplify it then you'll get the answers 3 over 11 but this is not a final answer because we still have a 1 here so the 1 have to be added back to this fraction and this is the final answer so 1 3 over 11 is the fraction form of this recurring decimal 1.27 now we go to the last part of this chapter which is solving problems involving geometric progressions so now we have example number one Shao started working for a company on 1st of January 2003 with an initial amount with an initial annual salary of 24,000 each January of the subsequent years the company increased its sal his salary by 5% of the previous year's salary find his annual salary for the year 2008 so every year his salary increased by 5% so actually this is a geometric progression so how do we know this is uh, arithmetic progression or geometric progression so we try to find the salary one by one okay so in the year 2003 January 2003 he get this and the next year 2004 his salary increased by 5% how do you calculate the total salary annual salary for the year 2004 so we take 24,000, we add the 5% of 24,000, which is multiplied by 5 over 100 because this is 5%. And if we try to factorize 24,000 here, you get 1 plus 5 over 100. And this is actually 1.05. Uh, if you are very good with the percentage, you can already see that by increasing 5% every year, it actually means multiplying 1.05 every subsequent year if every year you need to multiply by the same values multiply by 1.05 so 
every subsequent year, you will have to multiply 1.05 to the total to the total annual salary last year. So since you are multiplying the same value every year, this is your common ratio. This means that this is a geometric progression, not an arithmetic progression. To find the annual salary for the year 2008, for one year only, we are using TN because we only want to find the annual salary for the particular year, one year. Where N here is from the year 2003 until 2008. So during 2003, January of 2003, 24,000 will be T1. So during January 2004, it will be T2, January 2005, T3, January 2006, T4, January 2007, T5, January 2008, T6. Hence, N is 6. A is the first term here, 24,000, where R is 1.05, because increased by 5% every year. We substitute this into the formula. We calculate this part, you get the answer, 27,153.80 cents. Now, we go to B, the total salary. Okay, so if asked for total salary, means we are looking for S and sum. To the nearest RM paid to him by the company for the years 2003 to 2008. So together there are six years, as we have already calculated previously. So N here will be six, A will be 24,000. R1.05, N is 6. Substitute this into the formula, where A here is 24,000, R1.05. Since R is bigger than 1, we are using this formula. Yeah? Calculate this, you get the answer, which is the total salary paid to Shah. Example number 2. A ball is released from a certain height above the horizontal floor. It bounces and reaches a height of 50 cm for the first time and the bounce second time at 40 centimeters, 32 centimeters, and so on. Calculate the height reach at the eighth bounce. So at the, we only want the height at the eighth bounce, means we're looking for T8. But the first thing we always do is we need to check whether this is uh, an arithmetic progression or a geometric progression. So this is not an arithmetic progression because 40 minus 50 is negative 10, 32 minus 40 is negative 8. Hence, they don't have a common difference. But we also need to double check whether they are geometric progressions or not. So we need to find the common ratio in order to determine whether this is a geometric progression. To find a common ratio, we find the ratio between the second and the first term. So R1, which is 40 divided by 50, 4 over 5. Then R2 will be 32, the third term over the second term, which is also 4 over 5. So it's confirmed that this is a geometric progression. Then in order to find 8th bounds, which is the 8th term, we use T8. And hence the A here will be the first term, which is 50. And R of course is 4 over 5. We substitute into the formula to find a T8, which is this. Okay, so T8 equals to 50, R is 4 over 5, and 8, N is 8. Calculate this, you find the height at the 8th bounce is 10.49 centimeters. At which bounce will the height reach be less than 4 centimeters for the first time? Okay, so it'll be less than 4 centimeters, meaning that Tn is less than 4, because Tn here represents the value of the height at nth time. So we use the formula here, we replace this with a r minus n uh, to the power of n minus 1, where a is 50 centimeters from the previous slide, r is 4 over 5. To solve this, when the unknown is an indices, we move this value here and then simplify it and we use the logarithm. So we log values of the, from both sides. So that we can use the power law to bring n minus 1 to the front here, which is this. And then we can bring log base 10 of 4 over 5 to the right hand side. Since log base 10 of 4 over 5 is a negative value, when we move it, you need to change the direction of the inequality symbol. How do you know this is a negative value? You use a calculator to check first before you move it. 
If this is a positive value, then you don't have to change the direction. And lastly, negative 1 here, move it here, becomes plus 1. Use your calculator to find the total values here, which is 12.32. And n itself must be an integer. So the smallest integer which satisfied this condition here is 13. So when n is 13, the ball bounces with a height less than 4 cm for the first time. So this is the end of this video, which, which is also the last part for chapter 5. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.